Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week. I'm James Titko. This week's question is from listener Joanne. Hi, Naked Scientists. Just wondering why do we have bodies of salty water and fresh water? Surely over the millions of years, rocks will have been dissolved and we'd have salty water everywhere. Just wondering. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Some good points you've raised and some things to clarify. As anyone who's ever taken a dip in the sea and had the unfortunate experience of swallowing some water will know, it tastes incredibly strongly of salt. In fact, the average salt as a proportion of weight in the sea is 3.5%. Compare that with a McDonald's French fry, where the number is 0.5%. And you're absolutely right, Joanne. This is because of minerals from rocks on land making it into the sea. Now, there are a few ways this happens. One of the main ones is that carbon dioxide in the air dissolves into rainwater, making it slightly acidic. When this rain falls, physical and chemical processes release minerals, including sodium and chloride, from the rocks into the runoff water, which either goes directly into the sea or is eventually transported there via rivers, streams and lakes. So rivers, although they might not taste of salt, they do have these minerals in them, but they're being carried in a continuous flow through the water system towards the sea by gravity meaning the saltiness never accumulates. Similarly, most lakes also have this avenue for escape for the water and minerals via the rivers and streams connected to them, with some exceptions. But on the whole, the salt doesn't have a chance to collect there in vast quantities. So, all roads lead back to the sea, where, as Paul writes under the forum post for this week's Question of the Week, Water evaporates, leaving whatever salts are present in the oceans, and the evaporated water then becomes precipitation to start the cycle over again. And he's exactly right. Thanks for that, Paul. The main way water escapes from the ocean is through the chemical process of evaporation. The difference with this escape route is that there's no room for the minerals dissolved in the water to make the jump too. As water molecules with enough energy escape from the surface of the ocean into the air above, left behind sodium and chlorine raises the salt concentration of the sea. Thanks for sending that in, Joanne. I hope that helps. Join us next time when we'll be answering this question from listener Paul. He says, if there was a scenario where you wanted to direct a laser somewhere... But the moon got in the way, so you needed to somehow get the laser beam beyond the moon. Could it be deflected? Another corker of a question for us to have a look at next time. If you have any thoughts on what we discussed today here on Question of the Week, please tweet us on at Naked Scientists or log on to the forum on our website to join the conversation. If you've got any questions yourself that you'd like us to tackle, send them by email to chris at Naked Scientists. Thanks for listening, and until next time, goodbye.